Welcome to the third video about my procedural planet generator. Today I am going to show you how to create renders of the surface of generated planets using true surface displacement and adaptive subdivision. The procedural planet generator is available for sale on Gumroad. Before we get started, I want to clarify a few things about this procedure. The procedural planet generator was not designed specifically for renders of the planet surface. It is more of a nice side effect of its setup that I think is worth demonstrating. While you can definitely get better looking results for planet renders by creating them from scratch through the usual procedure, the planet generator can be used to create them very quickly. There are some limitations to this however. First, by using this method the planet surface color and its displacement are not perfectly aligned, which means that you will not get ideal results for coasts and river landscapes as you can see on this render right here. This also applies to planets using the lava node group and ice and gas planets. Then, handling the camera is a bit tricky because by default our scene dimensions become very small if we position our camera within the atmosphere of the planet. With the settings we are using here, the scale of the planet's features will also be off. This is because the node groups do not generate enough detail to get good looking results for the planet scale that we would actually need, which also means that you can't create a convincing zoom out video from the planet surface to the entire planet for example. I also need to note that there is a bug in Blender version 3.10. It gives results like this when GPU rendering. The bug has been fixed in 3.11, but you can also use Blender version 3.0 for this. For this demonstration, I'm using Blender version 3.12. Okay, so now we can finally start with the actual demonstration. For the surface renders, I have set up a camera in the blend file that is positioned within the atmosphere. For this, we just select in the scene properties our surface camera under camera, and there you go, you can already see we are within the atmosphere of the planet. Of course, everything looks flat here, and that's because by default, the node groups use bump instead of true displacement. But the node groups were all set up with uh, displacement nodes, so all we have to do to switch this we, uh, is go to our material properties, and down here, under settings surface displacement, we switch this to displacement and bump. And if we then go back to our standard camera, you can see we have actual displacement here on the planet. Then we can also increase the subdivision level to increase our uh, to, to get better results by going to the modifier properties, increasing this value and uh, to 4 for example, or we can use a more efficient way and use adaptive subdivision, which gives us different subdivision levels depending on the distance from the camera. And we can do that by going to render properties and here under feature set, switch this from supported to experimental. In the blend file, I've already set up a few things um, that work for, for my computer, and you, but you can find the subdivision settings for adaptive subdivision down here and uh, switch the dicing rate in the viewport and the render to a value that works for you. You might have to increase this value if, um, you, if your scene doesn't render. You can also uh, change the settings for individual objects here under the modifier tab and uh, make sure that adaptive subdivision here is activated. Of course, our displacement is way too high right now. If you want to use this pre-designed planet, you would have to adjust the displacement values of each node in the shader editor, or you can do this globally by just at the end of the node groups, just add in a vector math node under converter um, between the final node in the uh, node row and the material output and switch this to multiply. And then you can, you can see because the values here are zero, we don't have any displacement here now. And we can add in a value node, for example, connect this to this and set this to 0.5. And then you can see we only have half the displacement for the entire planet and don't have to uh, change the values individually here. For demonstration purposes, we are going to create a randomly generated planet by using the random generator add-on. Because of the limitations of the coasts that I mentioned earlier, we are first going to use an arid planet, which of course doesn't have any oceans. For this, we just go to planet type and set this to arid, and then we can move to the displacement options that you'll find under advanced options. And here you can set a displacement factor, because the default displacement for randomly generated planets is too high as we saw, we set this to something like 0.01. And then we also have to do some tricksing because of the scale limitations mentioned earlier. Because we want the mountains to be a lot higher than the general displacement noise on our continent, we set this to something like 40. Of course, um, keep in mind that the 40 is also multiplied by the displacement factor, so actually we have a 0.4 for our mountain, mountain displacement. Then we can also remove the masks for the mountains just to get uh, a few more mountains on our planet. And then we can click on generate. And if we now move to our surface camera, you can see 
everything is flat here and we only have bump that's because we still need to uh, switch to displacement and bump in the material properties down here set this to displacement and bump so I skipped ahead a few seconds because it uh, took a while to uh, render um, in the viewport and you can already see we have our uh, some mountains and um, the ground has some holes in it and it looks like a landscape because the planets are randomly generated with the add-on we also get some variation for the displacement values and if you're unlucky you might end up with a render that looks completely black and that's because um, either you're inside a mountain or you're below the surface of the planet and there are three ways to quickly change that and you can either select the camera here and move it up slightly by pressing gy and then for example 0.001 remember that we are here dealing with um, with a scale that is very small and um, what you could also do is you could scale up atmosphere clouds and planets so if uh, you have a black render just scale it down slightly or you can go to the planet and here um, in the node groups you can open the terrain node group and you can see it consists of many smaller node groups and here for general displacement which takes care of basically all the um, small uh, details here on the surface you connect the mid-level input to the group input and then here outside you can switch this value to for example something like minus 10 and then you can see if I position my mouse here the horizon is a bit higher and just make sure that you don't change it inside here just connect it here because otherwise it will always um, use this one for the node groups if you save the file and um, you would have to get every uh, randomly generated planet with this value here and also make sure that you don't move this up in the node group input too high because these um, the top inputs here need to stay in the right order the buttons or button worms are not that important um, for the order for the randomly generated planets and now uh, you can play around with the scene you can select surface camera and for example set the pivot point here to 3d cursor make sure it's in the center of the scene by pressing shift c go back to our camera and then you can move around the planet surface freely by pressing r um, for example twice on the keyboard or rx if you want to go in x direction you can uh, move around the surface of the planet until you get um, uh, something that looks nice and you can see here we had some rivers and here you can see where the precision is um, not ideal and you get here displacement um, where there actually shouldn't be displacement and you can also see if we move move a bit further you can you get to the night side of the planet and you can get some nice looking atmosphere cloud effects um, that look like um, like um, the approaching dawn for example here something like that and you can also play around with the clouds by selecting the clouds and generating different looking clouds for example like this which of course also changes the light the lighting of the scene and you can uh, do the same for the atmosphere set this to blue for example and go with for example lower atmosphere and if you would set it to a very low number and activate for example here in the world the stars you would actually be able to see some of the stars up here and you can also set this to a high value get a very dense atmosphere or set this to something like, like a dusty atmosphere and play around with all these settings until you get something that that looks cool and that you want to render of course you can also if i uh, now set this back to something something earth like like this you can select the sun and also rotate the sun to say, change the position of the sun to get uh, different lighting here um, for for your scene so now i just want to show you two different examples of different looking planets for this we go back to our object menu in the shader editor and then we just create uh, the same uh, thing that we did earlier for standard temperate planet and for this we set the displacement factor again to 0 0.01 and the mountain factor to 40 and then we click here and we can also deactivate the mountain mask and then click on generate random material 
And here we can go to the material properties, switch this to displacement and bump. And as you can see, we have our landscape here and we have some mountains and also some green this time because we don't um, use the desert like arid planet type this time. And uh, we also have oceans. And here you can see the problem again with the coastlines because the displacement is not precise enough to get the coastlines right. So we would have to either accept it or increase the icing rate even higher to get better looking results or just find a different um, place uh, for the camera. And I forgot to mention that if uh, you want to get a better coastline, you can also try playing around with the mid-level values of different nodes. For example, if I go into the terrain node here and then into the mountains node here, you'll find the mountain displacement uh, node composition. And here is the displacement node. And if I set this mid-level value here to zero, you can see the coastline looks a lot better, but it's still not as precise and as it would need to be to give a realistic result because you can see here some of the ocean goes into the, the displaced terrain here and that breaks the illusion of, um, of actual realistic terrain, unfortunately. Just keep in mind that if you change node values inside the node groups, they are changed for all planets that use these node groups. So if you generate a new random material, it has this exact mid-level here. So make sure that you maybe keep a safe file of the original blend file uh, available if you change something here. What we can also do, which I uh, forgot to mention earlier, if we, for example, set our clouds to something a bit less dense, we can also activate our ring system. And here uh, we can play around with the positioning of the ring until we can actually see it. Now here it's like this, and then you can get some uh, nice looking rings in the background, for example, for your alien uh, sci-fi planet for example. And finally, I can also show you the same thing for moon-like rocky planets. It's a bit more difficult to get them right, but all we have to do is switch to moon-like and then we deactivate atmosphere, clouds and planetary rings, and then click generate random material, set this to displacement and bump. And there we go, we have our moon-like surface here. And we could also play around with, with all these values, um, increase the displacement, for example, and get the result that we desire. Unfortunately, the surface camera um, surface camera renders do not transfer well when going back to the standard camera. As you can see, it looks very flat here, and so and that's why you can't really do convincing zoom out videos from the surface camera to the entire planet orbit. And we can see the entire planet; it looks very flat here and not as good as if you would generate a random material here and not set up the displacement. So that was everything I wanted to explain in the video. You can clearly see the limitations of this side feature, but it's just a side effect I think is worth showing where you can easily generate landscape images for certain terrains and basically just get a feel for your planet. Maybe if you want to uh, look below the atmosphere and see how it could look on the surface, it's very easy to do and um, you can play around with it as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my video series and um, if there are any questions or if you would like uh, to have more videos about certain features that, I, that you want me to explain in a bit more detail, then please let me know and I'll see what I can do. So uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day.